Crouch. Bind. Set. Joe presents the House of Rugby, Season 3. Loyal viewers, I feel that I should apologise in advance for what you're about to see. But to contradict that, if you are listening to this as a podcast, you probably want to check this out on the YouTube channel or maybe take a look at the Rugby Joe social media because joining me and the fabulously hairstyled Sean O'Brien is a sort of yellow bearded man. You could describe him as the love child of Jeremy Corbyn and Noel Edmonds. It's Alex Good or... Alex, good God, what have you done? Alex Hi guys, good to see you too. Yeah, <laughs> Alex, um, Alex the Goat. <laughs> goat. Nice. Quick from yeah, you. Always okay. back to the farm. Not, not the greatest of Straight all time. The just the goat. <laughs> yeah. Um, t- oh, talk us through this th- this fashion statement, Alex. Well, it's certainly not a fashion statement. Um, I don't really know. There's, I'd love to tell you that it was a bet that I lost, and it was either my hair or my beard. And obviously, I went for my my beard because my hair would fall out but I don't know I just um, was thinking about it I don't know what my inspiration was um, I, I was joking with a mate here and his wife and they were like oh just, uh, just do it see what happens and um, my my girlfriend was like yeah why not you can always shave it off and I just thought I'd see what it looked like and it doesn't look very good at the moment I'm not going to lie it did look a lot better in the first week and a half but so you got, I was convinced you had to get by permission to have it is that what you're saying no, I didn't have permission. I just I was a bit attentive <laughs> about it, and then I thought, actually, why not? Um, and uh, is your girlfriend it, in Japan? No, she's not. No, that's probably um, why she agreed. It's, to it's it. be very careful. I don't have a Japanese girlfriend, just to be be clear before Sean jumps on that one. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't say but, anything like that. But um, you know, I, I just I don't know. I just thought, why not? And uh, if I didn't like it, I'd shave it off a day or two ago. But um, Obviously, Lee convinced me I should uh, keep it for the show, and I uh, thought, <laughs> in case we have nothing to talk about, it gives us some entertainment. Interestingly, well, what we've got what does, to talk about? What do Japanese um, <clears throat> what do Japanese women think of, like I suppose, <laughs> rugby players in general over there and foreigners? Get to the in, point because like, we're all getting nervous. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just I thought there was an embargo that I wasn't allowed to talk about girlfriends and you, and yet you're coming up about girls and me in Japan. Sure, <laughs> no, what's no, this about? Not about you. Not about you. This is in general. I'm asking you in general. Did they like rugby players? Um, was that your question? Um, well, is it obviously a big language um, barrier? So I haven't really uh, really had any chance to speak uh, to any Japanese girls about rugby in depth. Um, judging by some of my teammates, I'd say. Yes, like like anything, if you have a bit of status as a rugby player, um, people quite like that in in life. Um, but uh, yeah, I can't I can't say I'm the best person to ask to honest, right? yeah. Um, Alex, the color interests me. Did you contemplate I don't know any other different colors? Yes, um, there was a big debate of whether I was going to go green for the green rockets. Um, yeah. And that was, You've that got was pretty to do close. That. That's what I was going to say. But You've got to do that. I thought it would be taking the piss too much uh, and I wouldn't be taken seriously or I'd be embarrassing the club. Mm. Not, not the blonde isn't. Um, but um, I was a little bit worried about that. So, yeah. Uh, mm. Unfortunately, I, I didn't go full green. Uh, there's still time. There's still time. You look hideous enough as it is now, to be fair. So it's... it's well, it takes it's away... It's, it distracts. Yeah. I mean, one, one thing I would say... Go. Is hmm. and Sean, you can relate to this. Is if I'd been in an English changing room, it would have been relentless the banter, just non stop abuse, everything. In Japan, everyone just goes, Oh, wow, okay, nice, and just carries on, like you know, it's it nice a really too, cool thing. It? Yeah, um, yeah, they're so nice to you, which is perhaps there's two ways to look at it. One, you need some people just to make you a bit more accountable or to understand you're making some bad decisions. That's us. Or the other side, <laughs> yep. Or the other side of it is, um, it's you know, just be whoever you want to be and do whatever you want to do. Um, so yeah, it's it's two ways of looking. So at now it. you've made me feel bad for the introduction, and you're just being who you want to be. And I apologise. She's expressing myself at the- 32. Finally. Who is it you really want to be, Alex? That's the question. That I'm well, asking. unlike you, I did catch your show last week. I didn't go to my friend's house uh, and ask his wife for the picture <laughs> of, um, you know, like uh, someone with a blonde beard. Ricky Martin comes to mind. Um, <laughs> Ricky Martin you know, I, never had a beard. Uh, I'll show you a picture. I nearly did a the reality Get it up versus. Right now. Get it up. 
Get it up. Oh, just just what, Google Ricky, Ricky Martin, Martin. As in Ricky Martin. Ricky Mark- had Martin. A, had a Martin. blonde beard. Living yeah. Vida. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. always was clean shaven. But, but to be very clear, I, was saying, I, wasn't, I didn't go in there thinking I want to be like that. I just thought, you know, I'll dye my hair blonde, uh, my beard blonde and see what happens. And uh, yeah. Each to their own, I suppose. Each to their own is what I'd say. <laughs> I know. You, you're Chris Hemsworth. I'm what was it? J- Jeremy Corbyn and Noel Edmonds together. No, Jeez, the love child terrible. of Jeremy Corbyn and Noel. Yeah. Edmonds. Oh, terrible. Oh no, I'm sorry about that. Um, apart oh, from don't backtrack now. Everything else. What? How yeah. is Japan? You you won. You won at the weekend. Yes. Yeah, we got a win. It was uh, it was awesome. Um, I was reliably informed it was 862 days since I last win in the top league, uh, or. Uh, in a professional game so um there was a lot of emotion one or two players with a few tears um a lot of the coaching staff uh were very teary-eyed including one who was it was fully bawling his eyes out um <laughs> so yeah it was a big day big day for the team and um yeah very happy because it was it was a tough scrap and we probably don't know if we deserve to win we uh on the wrong end of a 14 um 14 penalty count against us on rolling malls and they went 60 yards on one of them which is quite demoralizing as a fly half just backpedaling 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 <laughs> but we we scrapped through and showed some fight to, to win it which was great i seen i seen afterwards you had a couple of beers yes why, why are all the beer can why are all the beer cans uh, uh I, they weren't they weren't beers uh, covid reasons we weren't allowed to have beers um in the in the change well, room cans, well really? I mean, I don't know what I'm like. Yeah, it were beers, but um, Isaac is quite bad <laughs> um, uh, for uh, a COVID. And it was only afterwards I was informed that we weren't allowed to put on social media that. So I, I blanked them out with um, some angry emojis, I think it was. Uh, I wondered why you'd done that. Yeah. I, I wonder why they're so worried about someone having a beer in the changing room when you're actually getting a picture with someone anyway. Well, uh, what's the or, difference or with a can of pitch. orange, a can of beer? You've been on the pitch huh? as well. I don't know. Um, I don't make the rules. Yeah, but it's a strange one. Just uh, keep people happy. But it was pretty obvious what was going on, I guess. So, <laughs> so yeah. But it was, yeah, it was good job very, you used those emojis, obvious. Alex. Well, yeah, yeah. sometimes you just got to keep some people happy. So what does that mean for you and your Japanese journey now? You stay out there, you keep playing. Yeah, so we've been lulling everyone into a full sense of security so far that we're really bad. And actually now we're in the knockout stages, we're coming good. So we, we won our first knockout game, surprising people. We've got our next knockout playoff game this week against Sun, Suntory, who are uh, pretty good. Uh, they beat um, uh, a team last week or the week before, 94 points to 20. Um, That's Borden Barrett's team, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, he's not bad. I've heard he's all right. Um, yeah. Sean McMahon, not a bad player. Semi, uh, two good out halves coming up against each other. Yeah, yeah, I think that's <laughs> it's, it's gonna be a tough day, but we we you know got some confidence in the group. Um, so we'll see, see what happens. <laughs> oh, no, you don't have any confidence in the group. <laughs> what what about Sean? And... You can't say that, man. <laughs> you have no idea what goes on in our in our team. I know that you're getting more than 60 metres and you're going backwards. That's not that fun. Yeah, but you can change those things in, in training in the week, mate. <laughs> oh. and, and God forbid that you do lose this match. Um, then what happens? You come back to the UK and you pull on your Saracen shirt. Is it as easy as that? Simple as that? Um, pretty much, yeah. I think uh, we'll have a, a week here just um, sort of saying goodbye to everyone. We have some team functions of just um some thank yous um presentations etc and then yeah back to, to england obviously isolate and then can go back into training at saris and uh if if required um go out and trot out for saris although they might be shocked at what they've got now <laughs> beard and playing uh, play. in, in... <laughs> would you um sum up your Japanese experience as um, a sort of a good life experience, a positive rugby experience, where would you put it in, in with those? I think, um, probably going to a serious note now, which is a bit shocked for Sean, uh, a shock even. Um, it's been a, um, it's been a, it's been a really good experience, a fantastic experience. I think 
but also at the same time, an extremely tough one. Um, a lot has happened personally, uh, family uh, wise, and it's been really hard, but it's been a great learning curve for me, um, sort of living on my own. Um, obviously, it's been harder uh, having to sorry having to make a lot of new friendships in a different language with people um, who aren't my players, people in in Tokyo or in the city around me, um, which has been fantastic. And I met some fantastic, wonderful people who have been amazing to me. Um, but um, as well, seeing a different culture, it's like I'd never really imagined, you know, you've been out here, Lee, it's it's fascinating. There's some weird, wacky times. There's some amazing parts to the culture that you know, I'd like to take back. Um, and just to understand it, I think, has been a, a fantastic journey. So um, really glad I've done it. Um, and it, it, I've learned a lot from it. But it was also it's also been tough at times. Yeah, well, I think it's uh, it's very honest of you to to say that. And when you come back and you've seen all your family and all your friends and all the people that you really want to see, then you'll be able to uh, go out for a beer with Sean. Yeah, I look yes. forward to that. You'll be able to see yeah. your bestie. My bestie Sean will go for a beer, and then hopefully not too many that he knocks my block off. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it would be uh, no, it'd be good. I'm I'm looking forward to obviously getting back to the UK, seeing family, um, you know, especially seeing my girlfriend. Um, it's, uh, it's a long time, six months, and, uh, you know, just looking forward to getting back. Um, I think looking forward to having a roast dinner at some stage would be lovely. Um, but uh, I, I can't talk badly about Japanese people, Japanese culture at all. It's been fantastic. And I would, I would encourage people to come on holiday out here or just to trial it um it's it's a really really been an interesting time in my life and I, i've i've thoroughly enjoyed it, a lot of it but just personally there's been some tough times but i think that's also part of growing up and you know i've been at the same club my whole life um and you know you know the kit man you know the players the analysts you know everything about it and going out of your comfort zone is also um probably quite healthy in the long run all right, I'm pretty excited about who we've got coming up on the show. Uh, not just because, Alex, you know him both on and off the field, but I think he did some damage to you uh, once upon a time. Yeah, I don't think uh, uh, Narani knows this, but he uh, got me a uh, shoulder reconstruction when we were <laughs> under 20s. He was uh, running down the wing, full tilt. My mate missed a tackle and uh, last line of defence, I... Uh, Thought I'd throw everything at him, give him a big right foot, right, um, right shoulder hit, and uh, luckily I was right by the touchline and I moved him about that much, about an inch. But um, yeah, my shoulder basically came out of place and uh, was in for an operation a week later. So uh, yeah, it was the first time we met. Welcome. And then uh, two weeks later, um, we were all uh, under twenties. We all had a few beers and uh, a night out in Cardiff, so uh, we had a bit more fun yeah, then and. Uh, and then I, everywhere I go now, he's, he's, he's a superstar. So even at the oh, Green Rockets, it, you know, he's uh, the superstar out here. The best sign they've ever had, apparently. So, yeah, <laughs> tough shoes to follow. <laughs> it yeah, wouldn't oh, be hard it, after you. The way yours are carrying on, OJ. <laughs> yeah, and away from nights out in Cardiff and accident emergency, for those of you who are wondering who we're talking about, it's Nemani Nadolo, of course. And Alex, maybe if you hadn't dyed your beard, you could have been the big uh, Green Rocket sensation. But I think that ship has sailed. Nemani, what do you think of this facial hair going on here? Yeah, I don't... Um, it, you do some weird stuff when you're in Japan, that's for sure. So <laughs> I don't blame him. He's probably uh, going through a phase right now. But um, yeah, yeah, I, don't, I, I can understand where he's from. I've, I've done it before. I dyed my... Well, when I had hair, I dyed it blonde when I was over there a few, few years ago. <clears throat> Um, yeah. how, I, how I've told you, you no one, no one judges you. Sorry, no one judges yeah. you out here. They just, it makes you feel very good about yourself. Um, <laughs> Namani, thanks so much for for coming on um, the show. Uh, tell us how you've been. Um, probably frustrated to be injured, but flip side, delighted you've got your barbecue back out and the sun is shining over Leicester. <laughs> yes, uh, I can tell you what. I probably picked the wrong time to be injured. Uh, just through the, I guess, the bulk of, of winter. Um, but I've come good now, so hopefully not too long till I'm back on the field. But, uh, no, settling in real well. I uh, got the, the Traeger out the other day. Of, I used a few barbecues and um, thought I'd, I was a bit lazy on the weekend, so I thought I'd use that pellet one. And, yeah, it's just a good time now that the sun's out, barbecue weather. Can't complain. It's like back, back, 
like being back in Australia. Uh, <laughs> Nems, uh, Nems uh, I was looking at your Instagram. <laughs> yeah. So I was uh, like, who are you cooking all this food for? By the way, I hope I hope you're not eating it all yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, funny this. So um, get this. We, my neighbours, uh, one's a Leicester fan and the other guy's a, a soccer fan and we had a bet and I lost. I said, listen, I'll cook you guys some ribs one day. And I, for me, I just love, you know, the, the, the process, doing it, getting up at five in the morning, you know. Anyway, so um, cooked them. I cooked them the, uh, this tray of meat. Um, they they enjoyed it from what I heard from it. Funny thing is, I only had one beef rib, and I ended up getting a pizza that night because I was just I don't know, oh. I just didn't feel like eating meat. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, yeah cooking know, for weird. twelve hours just, and then you get a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, it's, but yeah, I just love the process. I just love cooking. So. Uh, yeah. Barbecue means sunshine, but you've not had much of that. I mean, it's not uh, when, when people are looking into your social media, um, it does give us, I'm sure, a little laugh to see you going training, uh, sliders on, snow on the ground. And you are just like, when is this winter going to end? It feels like it's like Game of Thrones. You know, winter is coming and it is never going away. Um, but how much of a shock has it actually been for you this winter? <laughs> Oh, I can tell you hands down, uh, and, you know, I've been fortunate enough to live in some countries where it's cold. This has got to be the, the coldest winter I've ever experienced. Um, my, my wife and my son were in Brisbane um, for the whole of that winter, which is about four months. And at the moment in Brisbane, it's summer. So, yeah, being on your own with two rot wheelers and, and a Shih Tzu Maltese, um, yeah, you know, thankfully they don't want, they don't like walking when it's cold. So we were all rugged up in the house for that three, four months. <laughs> I remember, I remember years ago talking to Shane Jennings and Leo Cullen, who played in Leicester for years. And they yeah. said, it is the worst of the worst place to be in winter. In, 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 honestly, yeah. they said there's nothing to do. The place is dark and miserable. So I can only imagine yeah. what you've been going through the last few months. You, sh you should have kept Irish. Is you should have kept Irish. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's uh, a lot of Aussies down there, mate. No, I'm not right up here. <laughs> um, but the thing is, I live right on a paddock, like on a on a cattle farm. So, like, they've turned it into these barns into a uh, into houses or like you know like properties. So, like, literally, yeah. there's like a cattle farm, right? Like a you'd know more about it, like a cattle house. You know where the yeah, the, yeah. the cows sleep. A unit, a so, slatted unit. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and so yeah. you can hear them in the morning. So, uh, yeah, and yeah, during winter when the when the sun goes down, it was at four o'clock. That was testing times. I can tell you, four p.m. and the yeah. sun's down. That was crazy. <laughs> all you're hearing, all you're hearing is cattle bawling and yeah, my dear, they make good milk. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. At least I get some fresh milk every day, which is pretty good. Yeah. How tough was it um, coming to a club and, and moving your family, you know, your wife, your baby, your dogs during a global pandemic? Because basically you seem to have had you know, the worst of it over the last 12 months. Yeah, it was tough. So uh, uh, my son was born um, during COVID when we were in lockdown in France. And then we had to be on five day lockdown in the hospital in a room for five days. So you couldn't leave the hospital for five days. And then um, we got out of that, and three weeks later, we're on a plane over here in, uh, you know, to Leicester. So, yeah, it's been crazy, crazy twelve months. Um, you know, and I, we're still we've still been in lockdown, really, haven't we? You know, we're just coming mm. out of it. So, um, no, it's been crazy. And then for five months of that, or four and a half months of that, um, my wife and uh, my son were in was in Brisbane. Um, seeing the family. So here I am slogging away in the winter and yeah, so it's been a crazy 12 months. What have you made of um, Premiership Rugby then? I know you've played your rugby um, all over the world. Uh, what have you made um, since you've been in Leicester then with your time? Um, it's, it's been different. I think uh, more structured. I think there's a lot more structure over over here in the, in, um, in the UK. Um, you know, playing Super and playing in Japan. Yeah, every competition is different, and you know, it, it it presents you know its its own sort of um, way of playing. So, for me, I think the one thing I've just had to get used to is, is the structure of how things are. It's pretty, you know, 
as opposed to in New Zealand or playing in the Southern Hemisphere, you know, there's a bit this it's different like skill wise a bit different compared to, to here, but you know, over here, like I said, structure is just is you know, next level. So um it's you know, it's it's I've had to change some of my game, I guess, um, in a way, which is a lot of running. Um, but you know, it's um yeah, it's good. It's 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 something I probably need at this stage of my career, it's just you know, a bit of a change, which is from something I'm used to playing in France for, you know, where they do a lot of running rugby and throw the ball around, I guess. And how are you finding find, the, uh, find, the old ball? Oh, sorry, the old ball, uh, Richard Wigglesworth, screaming at you to chase his box kicks. How's that going down? <laughs> yeah, old Wiggies. Nah, he's good, mate. He's, uh, he's, uh, nah, he's good. He's come in. He's, um, yeah, he's definitely, when he talks, everyone uh, sort of, you know, listens. So I didn't know he was 38. I thought, like, he look, definitely doesn't look, his, you know, he looks younger, but bloody hell. He's going good, the old No, he's a real pro. Him. Yeah, real yeah. pro he is, to be fair. But when he gets angry, he's angry, <laughs> thankfully. Yeah, it, it, so. yeah, his kicks are never too long, mate. It's just a bad chase. Uh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, Namani, what have you uh, made of the news um, that had been talked about for quite a long time uh, about the uh, two Pacific Island sides uh, joining in Super Rugby. Oh, I think it's great news. It's something we've been we've been wanting for a long time, you know, um, to be involved in, in a major competition. Uh, Super Rugby is, you know, we've, we've been crying for years um, to have this. So I think it's massive for Fiji to even to have their own franchise, um, in the competition, I think it's going to be great. You're going to see something similar to like the Huguerras, I think, you know, where, you know, you get to keep some of these guys on the island and, um, you know, they don't have to go to New Zealand or they don't have to come over here or, you know, or go elsewhere to, to, to make it. They've got an opportunity to play. And I think, um, you know, now, you know, the question for me is who they, who comes back, you know, there's always uh, finances and stuff like that. Cause I can tell you now, there's a lot of the Fijian boys are on some some big wickets over in Europe, so it's going to be tough trying to get them back. But um, yeah, it's good. I think the young generation coming through, especially with Vern Cotter there now coaching and the, the coaching stuff they've got there, you know, it's this, the, the next generation is going to benefit. I think, you know, maybe not this World Cup, but the World Cup uh, following, you know, definitely, I wouldn't be surprised if you see one of these teams make quarters, even semis from the islands. Names, names. I have a good. I have actually a good question for you as well. Um, this is by one of your fellow teammates, uh, Albert, who plays with us. <laughs> who's who? He, he says, "What a, what a, what animal does your province in Fiji represent?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a clown, isn't he? Um, so we all have, we all have animals or spirit animals, as you'd say in, in English. Mine's the uh, where I come from. We're, we're the pigs, so. We're pigs, pretty much. And he 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 also he also said you're a plastic Fijian. He said he said make sure you say that to him. <laughs> <laughs> Let's well, get Albert yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I I am one of the plastic. I, I am the uh, senior player of the plastic Fijian uh, in the squad. Well, when I'm involved in the squad, there's a few of us. So, uh, but yeah. thankfully, I've learned the language and I'm and I'm talking fluent now. It took me ten years to do it, but yeah. Uh, yeah, Albert's Albert's one of our enforcers. He's he's going well for us. He's he's yeah. uh he's he's a big man. He used to be a police officer back in Fiji. He was telling me some funny stories. <laughs> tell him to get what tell him to get a haircut. He thought he said blonde. He must be going through something he's, as well. Himself, himself, what, that's what's, where what's Goody wrong with got that, the mate? idea. I put I, I actually went to um the person who's done my hair and shown him a picture of Albert and went, this is what I want. Yeah, I want to look like this. <laughs> you, you, can, you can tell Let's him that, go. Sean. He's my idol. Yeah. <laughs> what, were you standing on your head at the time? I think it's the wrong way around. Yeah. yeah. Well, my hair would just fall out <laughs> and I, I, I wasn't really ready to go uh, like Nems just yet and, and sort of rock yeah. it. I was still hanging on, still hanging on just about. But I mean, you mentioned, uh, Sean mentions Albert and Namana, you were just talking about the number of um, Fijians 
uh, Pacific Island players who have come to Europe, come to the UK to sort of apply their trade. Do you think we will see an influx of players going back? Maybe not, because it's getting that balance, isn't isn't it? You don't want a whole lot of players just at the end of their careers because you've got to build for the future, mm-hmm. like you were saying, yeah. you know, two Rugby World Cups time or something. So how do you get that balance? Um, you know, I I think for for a team like like the Fiji, I mean, I'm speaking for the Fiji and Rua team. You know, you still want to get a few few of your older guys in there. Um, I know for a fact, like if you get someone like Leone Nakarawa who's playing at uh, Ulster now, you know, just one or two old heads there. Uh, big goal to see Semi Rondrandra go back. You know, um, and obviously there's logistics around them going back, but if you could get one or two, you know, to to help. Um, steer this team in the first sort of years of, of its existence, I think it's going to help the team really well. Like for talent, you don't have to go far. There's talent on the island. There's so much un- talent that, you know, that just go missing, um, that never get yeah. um, discovered because just there's just a lot of them on the island that love rugby. But like I said, if you can get a few of the sort of the older, older guys, maybe two or three in the right positions back on the island, um, it's going to help this team really well. Like, like for instance, uh, our five eight um, Benny Volavola, who's playing at Perpignan right now, mm-hmm. he'd be massive. He'd be someone you'd, if I was a coach, or, you know, picking this team, he'd be my the first guy I'd want to pick. You know, he's just mm. it works well, and I think he'll he'll do he'll do really well for him. Financi- yeah. Financially, think, um, though, it's, oh. it's it it couldn't be. How how are they going to close the gap? Let's say on someone like uh, Semi. For instance, who's getting like a meal or well, a meal Sean, in Bristol? Yeah. Well, I, I I reckon the Premiership would pay for to see Semi go back to Fiji. I wouldn't. I don't want to tackle him. I'd pay for them to go back to go to Fiji <laughs> in a nice possible way, mate. As fullbacks, wingers, Craig we're all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back to. Fiji. I mean, we'd we'd really miss you and the product of the game, but. You know, it's for the best that you go back to Fiji. It really is for our careers. You'd be helping you, um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll be driving you to the yeah. airport. <laughs> I, I think, I think that's going to be the biggest. That's going to be the biggest thing. I think we haven't really, you haven't really heard about it in the media. Um, I think the biggest thing is probably going to be the financial side of things. Um, obviously, you know, someone like a, a semi Rondrondra, it's no, you know. It's not a secret that he's on probably one of the, you know, highest paid players in the Premiership, um, and it's in pounds as well. <laughs> so you know, it's five times yeah, what it is yeah. back home. But um, yeah, look, that's going to be the biggest talk, and I think for guys to want to go back, you know, obviously there's going to be there's going to have to be a pay cut, you know, whether um, whether they like it or not. So it's go- it's going to have to come down to that, I think. And like I said. I'm sure, you know, Simon and uh, Vern Cotter and the guys at, at FRU, you know, they'll be doing their job. They'll be they'll be seeing who's out in the market, who comes off contract. Um, I know a few guys in Japan that are coming off contract and a few guys in, in uh, that are playing Super Rugby at the moment that, you know, are, are kind of waiting for this to happen. So whatever they do, they'll pick it. But I think, like I said, if you want to get a big name player, uh, like Lepan in Botia, who's playing at La Rochelle, you know, some of these big names in, in Fiji rugby, um, you know, it's going to have to come down to, I guess, you know, finances. Yeah, I think it's just like those sides will be the ones that everyone supports, not because they're the underdogs, yeah. but just because of what it represents. I mean, and that was the real shame, I think, in Autumn Nations Cup when with you guys not getting the chance to play as many games yeah. and, and sort of being being locked up because of the COVID situation as well. I mean, I think that everyone really does support Fiji, even if you're playing your, against your home team. And I think that these yeah. sides will have such big traction. Yeah, massively. I think it's going to be big, you know, um, as you can see, they had a Fiji draw that played in the NRC, and they had a big following base. So fans going up and down, you know, the um, up and down Australia supporting these guys. So, you know, they're going to do. I think they're going to. They might struggle. I, I think at the start, but I think after that, yeah. once they get get going, um, who knows? Like, and, and the good thing is, what we got to keep remembering is how good. This is going to strengthen the the internationals, the national team. 
Yeah. You know, you're playing New Zealand teams week in, week out. You're playing your Crusaders, your Reds, Rebels. Like that's only going to give these guys um, a lot of experience. And I can I can only um, relate it to Hagiwertas. You know, they first few years struggled and then they went to the grand final. And you know, and then you see their national team and they're always what quarterfinals at least yeah. in World Cups besides the last one. So. Um, it's exciting. It's exciting times on the island. So I was just going to say as well, you have to look at um, the World Cup 2007 when Fiji got to the quarterfinals. They nearly beat South Africa. They obviously beat Wales. You know, it was, everyone was behind them. It's it, The way yeah. Fijians play rugby is the purest form. It's so different to anything we, <laughs> we know in the Northern Hemisphere. And it, it has this beauty about it that everyone gets behind. And the same, yeah. you know, with the Japanese, you know, in the last World Cup, everyone loved to see an emerging nation doing really well. And I think the more we have Fijian teams playing in a professional setup and Japanese teams, you know, more professional over here, the better it is for the yeah. global game. And it just makes it yeah. more exciting for everyone involved. Um, Namani, I know you keep a keen interest on uh, not just the players who are in the Premiership, but across the board as well. Someone you've been particularly complimentary about when you were watching Six Nations was, was uh, Sean's old mucker, Keith Earls, uh, another oh, winger yeah. who's impressed you over the years. Yeah, it's great. It's, uh, I, I think it's, it's got to be one of the, you know, I guess consistent wingers in world rugby. He goes about his business. I've never met the bloke. I don't, I've, no, I've never played against him either, but... <laughs> I've always been a fan of how he just goes about his business without, you know, I guess, how do you say it? Like just getting praises, force, I guess, like, you know. Yeah, yeah he's just he just goes about his yeah. business. And I remember, you know, we keep like, he's been playing for Ireland for years, you know. And uh, uh, no, I, I've got great respect for him. I think he's uh, he's done really well in the Six Nations. And like I said, he's just consistently just does well. And as, as wingers, you know, there's... Um, yeah, you know, he's doing good for us old old guys, so 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 it's good to see. My my light bulb just blew there. <laughs> That's why I'm gone a bit dark. But um, yeah, Erzy, Erzy, it's funny you say that names about Erzy because Erzy, um, Erzy goes through life like that. He's very under the radar. Never like he's not on yeah. social media really. He is on nah. social media, but never like act, active on it. But like that's the way. Yeah. But when it comes to training on the field or in the environment, he's absolutely brilliant. And he grew up in a yeah. really like um, kind of it was a roughish enough part of Limerick at the time. And my Ross was named it. But he's like he's a character. His dad's a character. They've great stories and um, great lads to have a beer with. Like um, so, he's yeah. he's one of the top top lads that I've ever played with. He's brilliant. So he is. Yeah, no, he's just yeah, like I said, I've never met him, but like on the field, he just goes about his business, and um, you know, it's, it's, he's been doing it consistently for for years, not only at, at Munster but at the top level as well. So if he's got no social media or not very active in social media, um, the polar opposite would probably be you, Namani, who has got your own social <laughs> media profile. You've got your own vlogs going nah. on. Uh, tell us about the the show with your wife. Yeah, so. Um, when baby was born, we've got a big family. So like Kim, you know, Kim's got a big family and I'm Fiji and I've got about 20 cousins on one side and 30 on the other. So, you know, when baby was born, my phone was, you know, our phone was going off and we wanted to catch up. Everyone wanted to catch up. So we just decided before we moved over, so why don't we do a vlog? And then that way we just tell our family to jump on YouTube and have a look. And then anyway, just carried on, carried on. Then, um, we got a, you know, working with a company that helps us edit our videos and stuff, which makes it really easy for us. And uh, yeah, we've been going good. So um, yeah, you know, during COVID, and I was, you know, I've been on my own. I've just been jumping on social media and seeing things out there. I put a tweet out last night about the whole soccer thing, um, and like, yeah, that was great. Heck, I saw that. That was really good. A lot of guys are so offended. I was like, geez, calm down, people. But yeah, no, it's just great fun. It's great fun. You can never keep you can never keep everyone happy. That's just you have nah, to know whatever never. you put out there that you know, not yeah. everyone's going to be all right with it. So as long as you're okay, nah. then. But just it's not to a make problem. it clear, you were only saying that if people didn't want to follow their football team, come and watch rugby, they'd be welcomed in. One was nothing contentious. Like, no, nah, it literally was just a laugh as well. You know, like it was banter. And then I had someone was like yeah. private messaging me going. <laughs> 
you would know what what a real sport is. You're a waste of space. Sorry, yeah. mate. Oh, you can't so, you yeah. can't ever say anything. To be fair, to be fair, I said something like uh, the time I was launching my book. I said something about soccer when I was playing soccer, um, which is football over here. And yeah, I said that, and and the uh, the backlash I got off saying that I ju- that I just thought rugby was better at the time. I wasn't having really cut off soccer at all. <laughs> I got absolutely ridiculed at home by by so many soccer fans. They completely get the wrong end of the stick. You can't say anything oh. bad about them. Um, no. So, no wonder he, no wonder he got a bit of abuse thrown at you with that tweet. But yeah, you have to bear in mind for these for these yeah for these guys though it is like life or death. It is everything to them. Yeah. Their football team is absolutely everything. And uh, yeah. at the moment, they yeah, feel like it's slipping away from them a bit. But um, Before we let you go, Nemanja, let's just talk a little bit about uh, Lions. Everyone's been given their starting 15s, uh, their players, who they would have as captain, all the rest of it. I mean, for, as, a, as a professional player, do you sort of look at the Lions with a little bit of, uh, not envy, but if there was something like that that you could uh, jump in and be part of? Um, no, I wouldn't say it like that. I mean, the Lions is, you know, we, we've had we've had something in the past with the Pacific Islanders, but I think the Lions is probably the pinnacle, I guess, here in Europe. And so for us guys who watch it from the Southern Hemisphere, you know, that's growing up. That's we knew that whoever was in that Lions team was, you know, red hot coming from from the UK. So, um, look, is is it even going to go ahead, or is it there's still talks? No, apparently it's all go. All go. Um, I don't know. I would say, I would say though, you you'd pick your. You'd have to have Earls in there, Keith Earls as as, as a winger for sure. Um, yeah. But I, I know this sounds like there's a big debate, and I'll probably get ridiculed for this by saying this. But I reckon Finn <laughs> Russell at ten, just just for uh, for some yeah. But I mean it, it, yeah, I'm going to say Finn Russell would be my ten. The British lines. British and Irish lines. Names. Yeah. Oh, Nems. sorry, British, British and Irish, Irish lines. Lines. Sorry, guys. British you've Irish lines. You've been ridiculed already and you've not even oh, got no. off this conversation. Oh. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. I don't know. You're watching it. Oh, I'm going to get... Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I actually no, I'm heard sorry, I think... Got... Yeah, well, he was saying... No, go ahead, mate. Oh, I haven't heard Shawnee's no, uh, saying... 15 yet. Excuse He's me? saving himself till after the announcement. Yeah, yeah Shawnee, you don't, I, you don't I, put I, your 15 out there. I have to be very diplomatic here, lads, because in case I'm picked again, so it's... <laughs> yeah, fair call. Cool. I love the confidence. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. As a super sub, I could be a super sub yet. <laughs> yeah, top tourist. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but I think it's going to be it's, it's going to be good. I mean, with, with you know, especially against Springboks, um, you know, look, this, will the Springboks struggle? They, they, you know, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. I think um, if the crowds are allowed in, I'm, I've been watching some of the rugby over there. Crowds haven't been allowed to watch the, in the game. I think that'll that'll play a big part. But um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, sitting on the fence, um, how the game's going to go. Because you know, you look at the guys over here; they've been playing week in, week out. They've had they've already had a few internationals, you know, with. Um, eight nations as well as the six nations. So it's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see the level of, I guess, the, the Springboks, what they can bring, um, having not played, you know, that sort of level for, for, for a while. Absolutely. Um, what's next on the agenda for you, Nemani? Um, Get the injury right and, uh, you know, hopefully be playing on the field soon. So, um, yeah, like I said, the weather's starting to get better, so that that helps. That helps heaps. And then um, yeah. more barbecuing. I've got a. <laughs> after I sent off those pictures on social media, I've had a few people ask me to to make them some some boxes or some trays. I don't know what the how do you call it, meat boxes. So I'm trying to sort out. I know this is. I'm trying to sort out like how much it would all cost to charge them. So yeah, could be a little something I could do on the side. I don't know if I should be allowed to it's say not- that, but yeah. It's, it's it's not worth it. It's not worth it. I've I've yeah. I've looked into that back home and couldn't it couldn't be done properly. Oh, then I won't do it. Then I just don't have any time either. I've got a son, so yeah, exactly. Yeah, I love that you look for a side hustle. Yeah, side yeah. Hustle. Well, you've got to, mate. Yeah. You've got to. You've got to. Yeah, let let Lester just aren't paying you enough. I get it. I get it, mate. 
<laughs> my furlong. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, on that note, it's probably a good place to just call this quits, and uh, you can go off and hustle <laughs> elsewhere. And Amani, thanks so much for taking the time to join us. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate your time. Good Cheers, to see you, mate. Take it Cheers. easy. See you, guys. Sweet. Cheers. Always great to hear from Namani. Uh, Sean, before we move on, what is going on with the lighting in your house? Is this meant to be sort of a little bit moody, a little creating an atmosphere here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is what goes on at evening times here. <laughs> okay. Um, is there any chance hit, for another light because we're I, getting a bit anxious? <laughs> I actually hit the table with my knee and I thought the light had blown. But it's, okay. <laughs> it hasn't blown. I just, the switch is behind the table here. So I'm back. Oh, wow. I'm back. You are special, Sean. <laughs> Very special. Yeah, I saw I've been told. So yeah, okay. been told. Maybe you can go on the Lions um, trip as an electrician. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually for the crack. That would be good fun. Uh, um, let's in that case just stick with the Lions minus the electrician aspect of it. Um, Nigel Owens has come out and said that Alan Wynne Jones should be the captain because of the respect and the relationship that he has with referees. Um, would you agree that that is enough to, to be a captain? Not enough, because he's obviously got more than other credentials. But is that what a Lions captain should be about? Yeah, I, th I think there's going to be a couple of captains, though. But he's definitely one of them, yeah, if he's if he's fit. Um, and, yeah, but he, he does have a very good way of referees. Every referee knows him. He's around the game a very long time. He's a huge amount of experience. He's a good way of uh, managing referees. So he's definitely he's definitely up there, but there there's other contenders too, um, you know. And I think the leadership group in that group, whenever it's picked, there'll be a couple of captains um, from from you know Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales, wherever they may be. So it'll be a shared responsibility, but definitely he's he's one at the top of it for sure. I don't think that's um, the be all and end all, though. I think um, you know. Nigel has a, his own opinion and he's obviously Welsh which, which helps for Alan Wynn but um, like Alan Wynn's a fantastic player no doubt about it a fantastic leader but his relationship with referees I don't think that should be what decides who the captain is um, I think first and foremost you've got to be certain of your place um, and then on top of that there's so many players as, as Sean said who command respect um through just their actions, you know, how they play, how they lead off the field, in training and everything. So um, I don't think they'll be short of leaders. Um, it's just, you know, will Alan Wynn be guaranteed his spot? Now, he's a, he's a world-class player, but, you know, a few months' time, we'll see. But I don't think, I don't think, Goody, you've seen it with the last tour with Sam, and Sam has said it previously as well. It, it doesn't really matter now if you're not going to start or not because of the experience you have in the in, within the team. So I think that's why there'll be a couple of captains in terms of like Alan Wynn could be named as a tour captain, for instance. But if he's not there, you have the likes of Faz and, um, you know, Johnny or whoever it may be that can, that can fill these roles. So I think years ago, maybe it would have been stated um, on de them tours that he had to be a guaranteed starter. I think it's evolved a little bit since then. Um, you know, you could be captain if you went, for instance. But, but I'm talking about just the captain of the match day 15. You know, I understand what you mean about the tour captain, and, and I agree with you entirely, mm. which is very rare, Sean. But um, I just mean, like, in terms of who will be captain for the 15 or the 23 going out there, I, I, yeah. I think it would just depend. That has to be someone who's, who's obviously playing. And whether Alan Wynn will be, mm. you know, playing, we don't know yet. Um, let's just move on to the Rainbow Cup. Now, we are, it's starting off with some local derbies. There is apparently some um, concern that the South African teams will pull out of this, um, maybe even within the next few days. So um, by the time that people watch this, listen to this, things might have changed. But at the moment, it's going ahead. And they have uh, made quite a lot of rule changes. And some of these have come from the Southern Hemisphere. But I'm just interested in your thoughts on this. So I'll just uh, read them out to get the word incorrect. Red I mean cart replacement. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt there, Lee. I mean, the, the cup That's names good. this year have been unbelievable. You know, we've had the Trail Finders Cup that Saracen's been in. We've got the Rainbow Cup. You know, without mentioning too much about Mario Kart, what have we got next? The Cooper Trooper Cup, the Mushroom Cup, you know, <laughs> connect. the old Milk Cup from football. It's, it's madness. How do they come up with these names? But, you know, carry on with the rules. Oh, I'm intrigued to hear them. Okay. <laughs> 
Well, you don't even like the name of the competition, well, so I, I don't think I'm you're going to particularly saying, like the I'm not rules, saying so. I don't like the name of it. I'm just saying I, it, it's quite funny. These names are coming creative. up with. Yeah. It is. OK, red card replacement. Alex, you can have this one. A team will be without a player for 20 minutes, but will then be allowed to bring on a replacement. The player who received the card is not allowed to return, but another star from the bench can replace them. Thoughts? It's a really difficult one. Um because you don't want, with red cards becoming more and more common, uh, clearly at the moment, you don't want games completely ruined. But at the same time, um, imagine if, um, yeah, for example, Owen Farrell, you know, star player, and someone goes out of their way to bash his head in violently, and he goes off, and then they can bring someone back on in 20 minutes. You know, I think, is that fair still? Now... I probably would have made it 30 minutes. So there's more of a um, fear because 30 minutes with 14 men is, is really tough. Um, and again, if it was a violent act, then I feel like you shouldn't be allowed back on. But then it gets these grey areas. And if you're getting a red card, then everything's a violent violent act, I guess. So um, mm. look, I, I like the principle of it. Um, but I think I'd make it more 30 minutes because a red card is still a serious offence. And... Um, you know, you should have a, a proper. Uh, you should you should have, have to suffer more, as a team for it, ultimately. So yeah, more of a consequence. Yeah, uh, Sean, I, do you agree? Yeah, no, I don't really agree. I kind of think they should go down the rugby league route and put it on report. Um, that's what I kind of think. Leave everyone on the field and let it, let them be dealt with afterwards. Um, I just think I just think it's more. Uh, you know what I mean? It ruins the game at the minute. And if someone's off the field for 20 minutes or 30 minutes at this level, um, I think, you know, it's there's there's some some teams are able to survive and some teams are able to lock it up for that period of time. But the majority won't unless you have a really, really, you know, experienced team. Um, so I think on report and then, you know, take in all these uh, factors into it afterwards and dish out the relevant bands if it's bad enough. Yeah. So just excuse my ignorance, but how does that work in knockout rugby then? Uh, what happens if a team progresses and then someone's found to be guilty afterwards? Where is the sort of consequence in that? And they lose lose them for a lose them if it's a semi final, for instance, they lose them for a final. If it's uh yeah, but the team but, progresses. Yeah, but that's the way it is. Um I think it just it just doesn't ruin the game, um, there and then. And um yeah, that's that's just my thoughts on it at the minute anyway. I think we're in a difficult place because with red cards at the moment, it's it's this sort of this sort of big debate of you um, have to protect players more and more, and especially head injuries. We have to look after the player safety, and we get that. But there's so many red cards, so many yellow cards, so quickly. It's like, well, what's actually you know who's deciding the outcome of the game? Yeah, of course, it's the players. They can't do that, but some of them are. They're mind blowing to players, um, and on top of that, mm -hmm. I don't think we've got the infrastructure in the disciplinary uh, committees hearings yet properly or organised enough or consistent enough for that to go down that route of the on report. And you have to sort of change that up and make it um, a lot more streamlined. Because mm. okay, if someone, the, the in next... fairness, if someone Sorry. if someone kicks someone on the ground or hits someone a punch in the face, like, like. That's not that's not a non report. So like that's not a non report instance. That's a straight red card, for instance. So they have to be as as Alex said there, there has to be a certain, I suppose, infrastructure and the whole lot of it if they were going to go down that route. But I think on report for the general stuff that we're seeing nowadays that our lads are getting the game is stopped for ten minutes, probably, you know, looking at TMOs going, is that a seatbelt tackle? Is that around the neck? Is there con contact with the head? Is someone after a stroke in his head? Or <laughs> You know what I mean? There's so many things at the minute they're looking at. Um, so something definitely has to be done going forward. Okay, the next one. <laughs> this might even provoke more debate. Captain's challenge. The captains will be allowed one challenge per game to review try scoring and foul play up to the 75th minute. In the last five minutes, a captain can challenge any decision provided he has not made a previous challenge. Yeah, so I feel quite strongly about this because I did actually see this uh, in the Crusaders uh, Chiefs game. Uh, I saw the highlights of it and... I think it was Scott Barrett in the last minute 
um, challenged. So, Sean, I think you wouldn't have seen it, maybe. Um, the Chiefs... I did see it, yeah. Oh, you did, yeah. Chiefs player obviously went for a jackal. He won the penalty. And Scott Barrett challenged whether his hands had hit the floor first before raking the ball back. And I thought this was the most ridiculous thing I'd, I'd seen because what's next? Could, could he ask, um, has he come in the right angle of, of the breakdown and the TMO has to get a protractor out? Or, you know, has he held his body weight? You know, like it's, it, it becomes ridiculous. I think, you know, can you say, has he knocked the ball on um, in or something like that? Fine. Is he offside? Yes. Those kind of things. I think if we get to that point, it's it's too far and again it's just slowing the game up you're you know you might be the last call of the game and suddenly the crowd is cheering they're not sure whether to cheer again or what to, what's happening and we have to wait three four minutes before we get a result so yeah i feel quite strongly about it being able to challenge anything um and this is nothing against scott barrett and the crusaders if i was captain i probably would have done the same thing or tried to do the same thing. I just think it leaves it open to making it more complex, slower, and I, I don't like it. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be, just, I'd be similar. I don't, I don't like it either. I don't think it should be brought in. To be fair, because um, if if you get away with a turnover on your own line in the last thirty seconds of a game, and your finger touches <laughs> beyond the ball before you scoop the ball up. And they review that and they go, well, actually, his, his fingers were down there. His, his left pinky finger was touching the grass. <laughs> it, takes, it takes away from the actual skill of you actually picking it up without, you know, properly, uh, illegally doing it. So, um, bah, I just think it's, a, it's, it's not going to be a great one going forward. OK, and finally, the goal line dropout. In the events of being held up over the line, knock-ons the in, in the in-goal area... And the ball being grounded in goal by a defending player, a dropout will occur. The dropout, a kick must happen on or behind the try line immediately and must travel five metres. Failure to do this will result in the opposing team requesting the kick is taken again or a five metre scrum will take place. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of like this one, to be fair. Um, I think it, I think it just, it'll, it'll be all out attack. It'll be, it'll be get the fella who has the longest drop kick to bury it as far as he can down the field get a big a big kick chase to to the to pass the 10 if we could anyway but it'll be it'll be exciting and it'll keep the ball and play a lot more obviously and it'll just speed things up so be good for the game be good for the fans uh, good for teams who want to play a little bit yeah I think um, good for the kickers Alex well look I think um, if you're kicking the ball you've got a bit more confidence that you kick it a bit longer then you, the worst case it's a restart um they're kicking it from under their own post as opposed to a 22. So it means that teams have to be wary of that kick a bit more. You can sort of play around with that. Um, I'm not so sure about the being held up over the line. You know, I don't think you're getting reward for the fact that you've got over the try line and um, then they kick the ball to you or kick it long again. So I, I, I tamper with that. But as a rule, yes, uh, I think it's a good one. Um, gents, we've come towards the end of the program. Uh, before we bid farewell to you uh, both, uh, Sean, what's what's uh, next for you? Because I know you've got a bit of an injury. Yeah, a um, couple of weeks off for me. I ruptured my finger um, in the bat game, so strange one because you feel like a bit of a, a wuss going around with a little cast kind of on your finger, but <laughs> can't grab anyone at the minute anyway. So. Um, People are safe enough, and uh, yeah, a couple of weeks out. It's amazing how the uh, the tough, you know, farming Irishman has come to Richmond, and he's just softened up a little bit. Hey, it's amazing. <laughs> I can't wait. You're back, back actually in the country. Um, chat with you. But to, to, to have a fight, or <laughs> is that code for <laughs> so you? It's very you, you? Or you want to meet up for a pint? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Maybe maybe the pint first, then a fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Judging by the start of the show, maybe to just... tops off first and then wrestling, is it? <laughs> Seems to be your thing. <laughs> Love a good wrestle, to be fair. I'd like to make it clear that he's speaking to Sean and not me for anyone who's listening. My top was on at all times during this programme and there was no wrestling. Um, on that note, thank wow. you very much, guys. Thank you very much for watching, for listening, and we'll do it all again next week. Bye-bye. You've been watching The House of Rugby Season 3 on Joe.